Hey, how's it going? This is OXDF, and we're doing day two of Advent of Code 2015 in Rust. Uh, I do have a video, a couple of videos before this. We do day one, and we got an intro video on Rust. Um, but the intro video might be helpful if you're not familiar with Rust, if you're jumping into this video. But uh, either way, let's go ahead and take a look at the prompt. Uh, so in this one, I'm going to be given a list of uh, package dimensions. So in fact, it's going to look like this. So each, each package is going to have three dimensions with it separated by an X. Um, and for each one of them, I need to find the surface area of the box. So, you know, two times length times width is going to give me the surface area of one side and the, the opposing side will be the same as that. So that's two of those and two width times heights and two heights times length. Um, they also need a little extra paper for each present, the area of the smallest side. So I'm going to take the smallest side and actually add, make it three times, whichever one of those. Um, so they give me some examples here, and they ask me how many square feet of wrapping paper should we order. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, I'm going to do my, use my script here. Again, I went over this in the kind of intro video, but to um, go ahead and create my day two uh, project, as well as to get the input here, we can see that works fine. And go to our source here. Um, and my stub here is just going to uh, read all the input into data. So, um, so what are we going to do here? We are going to loop over lines. So we're going to do a for line in data.lines like this. And then uh, we can do that here. So we're going to do over these lines. And for each line, we're going to take the, vec the, the string and we're going to split it. And so what I really want to get is a vector, um, a vector or an array if you're using Python language. So I'll do something like let, um, I don't even know if I need mut. Well, let's, let's leave it not mut for the moment. Uh, let mut, uh, sorry, let dims dimensions equal, uh, and we'll, we'll type that, vec, um, and we don't really, it's going to be integer in there or something, but um, what we can do, we can do unsigned 32 equals line, and now this is where we're going to start doing a, um, so we'll do dot split, like we're going to start chaining together things here. So dot split on X. And I'm, I think the Rustian way to do this is to actually put this down on, oh, maybe not, let's see, maybe it'll format it for me. Um, and so we're going to split it on X. And so now we're going to have three, thi uh, three things. And, but I've got three strings um, and I want three integers. So I'm going to use the map function and map um, in any language, it's not maps, is going to take in some apply a um, function across each piece of a vector, and so the way that works in Rust is I give it something. So for I define what I'm passing in in bars here. So that d, I'm going to pass in some dimension. And I'm going to do d dot parse, and that's that's the function that uh, takes it and turns it into a um, takes a string and turns it into an integer, for example. And so now if I do d dot parse, then like that, and I'm going to need one last thing here. I'm going to need the collect. Um, and this is sort of like, just like in Python, when I use, when I map to something, I get back actually a map iterator, and I want to actually go ahead and make that into an array or a vector, and that's what the collect does. Um, so let's save this here. And again, I, I think we're supposed to make this look pretty. We're going to do it. Uh, for some reason, the, uh, the plugin is not working for me right now, because I think it would auto-format it this way for me. But anyway, we'll do this. And um, go ahead and run this. I actually think, let's see, so we can do cargo run. And we fail here. Let's see what we fail here. Um, can I? Okay, this is cool. This is a good learning point. <laughs> um, so it's saying a value of vec u32 cannot be built from an iterator over elements of type result. And this is a good. So Rust is when I run parse um, in Python, I think like, oh, I run the. Um, you know, str function, and it takes, or sorry, I run the, um, blanking on the name of the function that turns a string into a, oh, the int, the int function on a string, and it turns it into an integer. Well, the parse function doesn't actually return an integer. It returns a result, um, like, uh, like uh, a type, you know, literally like that. And the results really can be two things. It can be an OK object or an error object. And so I need some way to handle that. And so you could like explicitly write this out by doing something like um, if we do, if we make our map function a little bit bigger, oops, I don't want to, and do that like this, we could do parse, um, 
parse like this into um here, this one, sorry, what I'm trying to say, check my notes. I could do a match, just like I did in the last one. And I could match the result of that into uh, OK N, like this, returns N. And I could do error, anything, and panic, invalid, input, something like that, right? Um, and so this, what it's going to do is it's going to take our map but for each object, it's going to try to parse it. And if, if the parse returns an OK, we'll return the stuff inside the OK, the actual result. And if the stuff returns an error, we're going to panic and, and run away. Um, I think this should work. Let's give it a try and see if that fixes it. Um, now that's a, yeah, OK, so we're com it's complaining, throwing some warnings here because um, we define this dims thing. We never use it, but that, that's fine. But it worked. It worked. Um, this is all really annoying to type out every time you want to use the parse function. So what you actually end up doing here is we can just use that expect uh, parse error like this. And that replaces all of that. So expect um, it basically does all of that checking your um, basically make sure it's not an error. If it's OK, give me the result. Otherwise, you know, uh, complain. And so I think this will run as well. Same warning, but we're, we're making progress here. Um, you can actually also use, there's nothing called unwrap, which will work unlike expect. Expect allows you to kind of define the error. Unwrap just says, you know, give me, you know, dig a layer deeper and give me something. And if it hits an error, it's going to complain. Um, so that's another thing you might see. Um, so, okay. So my strategy for this one, we need the smallest side. Uh, in, and, and that's going to be annoying. We could do a lot of like if checking the finding the two smallest of the three or find the biggest one and then, you know, use the other two. Um, but what's occurred to me is why don't we just use a sort? Um, so we could come down here. We can do a dot sort like this. And if it's sorted, now we can just always take the first two as the, you know, so if, if, if it's length, width, height, you know, length and width is always a small side. So we're just going to effectively turn the box so the small side's always on the same side. Um, so let's, let's try that and make sure that works. And it does not. Let's see. Uh, cannot infer type annotations needed. Okay. Um, that's not the error I was expecting. I was expecting an error here because I made I got stuck on this for a long time. I had to actually get um, a friend to help me out with this, and Epi gets some shouts for this. Um, but what is actually happening here is sort is not a um, it doesn't return anything. Sort is sorts the vector, but then doesn't return anything. So when I try to it's it's not going to be happy here, even though it's complaining about that. Um, it's trying to it's saying I don't even know how to handle this array of stuff, and then sorting it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so what I really need to do back here is do dims dot sort like that. I think that'll still work. Oh, can I borrow? Oh, we can't sort it because it's immutable. So let's go back up. So this is you know it cannot borrow as mutable. It's saying I can't sort this array in place because you made an immutable variable. So now let's make it mutable and run it. And it worked. OK, so we are now taking each line. We are running over the line. For each line, we're splitting on x. We're changing each of the things from strings into integers. Uh, and then we're collecting that back into a vector. And we're returning a vector, an array, of three integers. And then we're going to sort that array. So we're making some good progress here. Um, so now we want to make a, we want to take that array and really turn it into, um, I'm going to say this is a good place for some object-oriented programming. Let's create a present object. So we can do a struct present, and the present's basically just going to have a u32 uh, width that's a u32 and a height that's a u32. Um, and then we're going to come down here and do the impl thing, impl present to give it some methods. And what? so we're going to do a function paper needed on a pointer to self. And we will get the pointer someday, but not, not super important yet here. Um, so it's going to take in itself, and it's going to return a u32. And now we're just simply going to do 3 times self.l times self. What's the second one? w. And then we'll do plus 2 times self. w. Oh, let's do l times self. h. And we'll do plus 2 times self.h, times self.w. So effectively, this is 
this, if this was a two, we'd be straight up doing the surface area. We're including the, the smallest side a second time. And because we sorted, we know that the smallest side is always going to be these first two. Um, so now we're still in our loop here. We've got our, we've got our dims, which is going to be our dimensions for one line. And we want to turn that into a present. So we can do let p, and we'll define that as a present. Uh, e oh, no, sorry. Let p equal present like this. And we do l dims 0, width dims 1, height dims 2. And now we've made our present. So we still have our present for that line. What we really need to do is keep the total area over all the presents, right? So we'll do um, let mut total area equals zero. So now we can come down here and say total area plus equals p dot paper needed, like that. Now I think we just solve part one. So let's come in here and put uh, total area right there and run this. We have an error here. Let's see. Uh, we're missing a semicolon right there. We probably want this comma here. I've seen that done in reading I've done. We'll run that. And we've got a total area. It's a giant number. Let's see if we have an answer here. Uh, 1586300. That looks right. 1586300. Sweet. Okay. Um, so we've solved part one. Let's make this let's shrink this down a little bit make sure so just as a recap we're going over each line for each line we're splitting it parsing all the, the each of the three dimensions into an integer uh collecting that into a vector then we're going to sort the vector so we have the smallest ones first and then we're going to create our present object and use that to get the paper needed uh, using this function here sweet uh, let's go to part two um, so we also need ribbon and ribbon is all the same width so we don't have to worry about area we just have to worry about length uh, the ribbon required to wrap a present is the shortest distance around its sides, so the, the smallest perimeter of any one face. It also needs a bow, um, and the feet of ribbon required for a perfect bow is equal to the cubic feet of volume of the presents. Don't ask how they tie this bow, they'll never tell. Okay, so I need to get the smallest, the smallest, two times the small, two times, well, we're going to assume L is the smallest and W is the second smallest, so 2L plus 2W plus L times W times H is the amount of ribbon we need. Um, so let's give that, that. I mean, this. I think because of how we set this up, we're actually in really good shape here. We can come in here and just do, um, let's see, ribbon needed, uh, pointer to self. Again, we'll return to U32. And this time we just need, it's, it, it's really the same kind of thing, right? We said we need um, two times self.l plus two, two Two times self dot w. That's the perimeter of the shortest side. Plus self dot l times self dot w times self dot h. Um, we could also do if we wanted to. Um, we could do some more functions. Like I could create an air, uh, a volume function, and then I could do two l plus two w plus volume or something. Um, but for something this simple, I think I think we're okay here. Um, so now all we need to do here is we'll probably just need another uh, let mut total, uh, let's see, ribbon to total ribbon equals zero. And then down here we can do, we've already defined our present, total ribbon plus equals p dot ribbon needed, like that. And so... Total ribbon like that, and let's see if that runs. Three three seven three seven four nine eight. Three seven three seven four nine eight. So that was because of the way we set up our first one. The second half just came trivially. Um, so when I solved this, I actually did send the code over to my friend Epi. He's uh, the author of Pharaoh Buster, a much talented Rust developer, um, or at least talented in Rust. Um, and uh, he asked him for some, you know, is there anything anything else I should be doing to make this more rusty in or, you know, um, and he threw me a couple tips that we can we can look at. Um, one, we might want to uh, meet that. We might want to look at 
adding like a new you there's no constructors by default but there is you can create you know there's kind of a by convention to make a new um thing so we could do like uh u32 width u32 space there i u32 and we return self like this and now we can do present L comma W comma H like that. And so there's like, now we can create a new present that way. So instead of doing this, uh, we can do let P equals present dot new. And then we do dim, dim zero, dims one, dims two. And this might be a little bit prettier to look at. Um, so let me see, we got an error here. Um, I thought that was going to work. Let's see. Um, so we got to go use the pass up there. Oh, sorry, maybe I'm supposed to call it like this when I'm calling it from a. Okay, so I think when I'm calling from an instance of a present, I do p dot, like this is a paper, a present instance, and I can do that. When I'm calling from the class itself or the struct itself, I use the double, the double colon. Um, and that's what they're telling me to do here is that um, I need to do present new right there. So um, that's an option that gets me the same, the same thing. Um, I didn't love this guy still. I'm like, why am I having to type out dims three times, right? And so he was like, oh, well, you, there's a more advanced thing we can try where you do um, use this from interface. And so I'm going to show you all of that real quick. Um, and that is just if we do impl from and we take a vec u32 like this uh, for present. And it's going to look like that. And now I can do fn from and that that is an important keyword. I have to implement the from thing there. So if I, if I say like vec and type it vec. U32, and then I do present. So now I'm gonna have a function that takes in a vector and returns a present. And now I can do present um, L vec zero, W vec one, H vec two. And what this is gonna do now is it's going to open up to me instead of doing this here, I can do let p equals um, let p, and I'm going to type this as a present, and I'm gonna, so equals uh, dims dot into, and so now when the compiler sees it says, oh, I'm taking this dims thing and I'm trying to turn it into something else, and that thing I'm trying to turn it into, I know is going to be a present because I've typed, I've hard typed it right here, and so do I have a function that maps using the from interface? from a vector into a present. And I do, I have this right here. And so it's gonna use this from thing to convert into a present. Um, and so now we can run that and it looks really nice. What's our, what's our warning here? Oh, it's complaining that we're not using the new function anymore because we're not using the new function anymore. Um, so we'll take that for now. Um, but so that, that, I think that's actually really clean. If I was writing some code, I like, I like this into thing because it just says, you know, how do I convert one thing to another? Um, so that'll certainly work too. So, uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and call this one. Um, hopefully, thanks for sticking around to the end. Hopefully you've learned something and uh, I'll talk to you next time.